Welcome to the show today. We're actually heading back to the Adirondacks with Johnny Thorpe and he's chasing otter. Uh, this is actually one of the first videos, uh, DVDs that I ever filmed for him back in the mid 2000s. Um, just being able to follow him around in the Adirondacks was just uh, priceless memories for me. Uh, but you'll see in this show his otter techniques and um, a lot of running and jumping little waterways a few bigger waterways but uh it's it's more about the experience than than any catches and and just really living the tradition of trapping uh through him and being able to watch this footage again is is worth way more than than any animal uh, in the fur shed but i hope you enjoy the show a lot and we're heading the adirondacks following johnny thorpe on his otter line yeah, I'm going to put an otter shed in here. You get these little streams like this. If there's any big ponds, lakes, or flows on the upper end of these little streams, don't bypass them for an otter. You can put a set in just to, about the week of the freeze up. Because all those otters will be migrating, they're coming downstream. Don't sell these little streams short. If there's any kind of watershed on the upper end, you think there's otter on it, you know there's a family otter. Make sure you've got a couple of bears set in these streams. This is a little choke area. I really don't have to do any work on this at all. And uh, I like to keep it as simple as possible. All I carry with me is a conibear. I usually try to set these at home. Speeds up the setting a little bit. I just set the trickers dead center. Pull the jaws all the way up. This one here, right, this set right here is good for about one otter a year. And I usually get one just upstream from it. I usually get a pair here every year, the week of the freeze. That's when you make your otter catches. Simple as that. Take this stick, run it through the chain here. Run it back through the, the eyes and the Springs. Simple as that. We drop it right in there. Don't go all the way in. We can even set it on a 45. Up to the 45. Just a little bit shallower now than it usually is. I see. That's it. Put a piece of wire on that ring there. You got, you can get out 50, 60 of these a week before the big freeze comes. You're gonna have some otter money. But do your research, pick all these small streams, look on the maps and see what kind of watershed are upstream. If they don't come out of anything, you're not gonna catch any otter on them. I mean, big flows or ponds or beaver colonies or whatever. Don't take much here to hold him if he gets, he pulls that stick loose, he ain't going nowhere with it. Might go down the creek five foot. That's about all. And you don't have to brace it in any other way except what I got right here. As good as it gets. Keep it clean. These otters are going to run these. These otters are up above here on these lakes and they're going to come down these as soon as the freeze starts. Well, this one's probably only about. Oh, God, we're big enough to accommodate a 330 here, and that's all we've got to have, to have with us. We can dig it down as much as we can. I'll show you a little trick. This is a good spot, Alan, because I'm going to show you a little trick that most trappers don't ever utilize. Probably never even stop to think about it. You can't get a conor bear down in there. You've got a 330, you know, like it. Leave it stick up in the air. I'm actually about showing you a little trick 
on these real shallow streams where maybe the water is only six or eight inches deep. Six, seven, eight inches deep. You can't really get a counter bear down under there. And you want it totally submerged. It don't matter if it sticks up out of the water, but sometimes you get a little rain and part of your tricker that way. A quick and easy way to do this is to just the counter bear trigger where you want it, set it dead center, spread it a little bit. And these straight up. You also make sure you take the triggers off while you do that. The fast water like this. Didn't get the water at all. I prefer to set the last knot. I like a I like it to be all the way in it before it fires. Take this, run it right through your eye, the eyes of your springs. And I prefer to have a kind of bear swinging myself. I have less misses that way, and this will anchor the solid anyway. Okay, you say, well, maybe I don't want to go through that. Okay. This rock is high enough where I don't have to do it. But you can take that, lay it right down on a 45 like that, and catch otter. Works fine. Nothing wrong with that set at all. You may think an otter might screw it up, but he wants, no matter which way he comes, you're going to have him. I'll take the gun beads out a little bit more and drop my cross piece down as much as I want it. Look at swings. When it hits the bottom, it's beautiful. And you don't have to do another thing with that. You put a couple sticks here if you want. When your otter comes through, he's going to be in the deepest part of your channel. I don't care if this channel is six foot wide, he's going to be right there. But, maybe you feel better about myself and there a couple extra sticks in here. Let's see the air. Drop him a little bit. I still like it to swing if I can. I don't want them. I really don't want those sticks down, and I don't want them binding on anything. I want that crap to fire free and clear. No resistance whatsoever. This is just a nice and go where I want him. Too late there. It looks like it's interfering with the trap. It it's inside the it's inside the springs, inside the jaws. Otter set. Not a lot of confidence in this. We're going to take some otter here this year. A little later on in the season, just before they start migrating, I'll put a couple more hunting bears in the stream. I think we might get a whole family of them all in one shot. pressure on them. Some parts of the country they have. Here we don't. Don't have too much competition. So. Sometimes they get smart to do something like that. The kind of bear kind of sticks out for them. They haven't seen it before. They're not a bit afraid of it. take a minute and talk a little bit about the otter stuff that you're watching here with Johnny. I filmed this back in 06 or 07. It's one of the first videos that, that I've ever uh, done with him up in the Adirondacks. And it was interesting for me. I had been with, I think Mike Gursky uh, in that Canadian adventure, I, he caught one otter and I think Jim Spencer caught one or two um, down there in Arkansas on the White River. But I had never really trapped otter because you're not allowed to catch them in Pennsylvania and I hadn't trapped in a lot of states at that time but I was really fascinated by the different things that Johnny was showing and, and you know basically telling 
on how to catch otters, whether it'll be on land or in the water with a, with a body gripper. But uh, I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, it was really fascinating for me to, to be out there with him. Um, you're going to see some success here uh, towards the end, but it was just uh, an awesome time to, to see these otter techniques, and I've instituted them uh, in my repertoire as we've moved on, but it doesn't matter where you're at in the country. If you can catch a lot of otters, say in Mississippi or possibly Tennessee or wherever you can catch a lot of otters, all these techniques are going to work for you, and basically you're going to uh, be in your fur shed quite a bit. But let's get back out there with Johnny on his otter line right now. Not only do you want a lure that's attracted to an animal, you want a lure that's lasting. And you want to know the uh, limitations of every lure you use for every bait. This is very, very important. Uh, most all lures will smell good when you attract the cap. And uh, smell of it. Of course, lures are made more to attract uh, trappers than they are animals, I believe. But uh, no matter how good a lure smells, it doesn't mean it's going to smell that way tomorrow or next week or even a month from now. A good lure will last you up for two, three weeks sometimes, depending on, on the weather element, depending on, on what the lure is and what's in it. But test your lures out well before the season. Pick sandbars, the old government testers, they used to pick sand flats and they rake them all up and put a stick of the lure on it out there in the middle and, and see what kind of tracks. And it's not, it, it doesn't matter how many tracks you get there. I mean, you'll get coon tracks or something more, more around any kind of lure you put out. It's, it's a reaction. You want to see a reaction with that lure. You want to see where the animal ran away with a stick or he laid down a roll on it or he, whatever you done. You want to see some reaction. Then you know what your lure will do. And you'll also know, know how long it lasts. And uh, you really got to know the limitations of your lure before you can get the full benefit out of it. And not all lures are created equal. I'm not saying mine is any better than anybody else. That would be a stupid statement to make. But I'm telling you, buy your lures in the late summer, test them out, let the animals tell you how they're there. Don't ask the lure buyer, lure dealer, tell you, every one of them is going to tell you he's got the best. And that's a damn lie because I have. But, <laughs> but all kidding aside, they can test them out. Don't be afraid to use a few ounces. Let the animal tell you how good it is and what the limitations are. Now, if I was testing a lure for coon or beaver or an otter or mink, I pick mud banks like, like along the stream here. For the foxes or coyotes, I pick big old sand flats where you could get some reaction. So I just take to clean these leaves off in here. Actually, this is during trapping season now. So we got, we got, don't have these leaves on here to stay along in August or September. That'd be a pretty smooth thing. We'll wash it down. You say we want to try a coon lure? Well, we got some more here somewhere. There. Yeah, this is a little bad medicine. That's all right. That's cracking the same thing. Take a good smear and put it in there. Just for the out. Stick it right there in the middle of the bank. Stick it down in there. Take a little something here. Wait for your tracks to come. Let the animal tell you how good it is. It's the easiest way there is to test the work. Pretty simple, but make sure you're going to do it. Never get carried away with uh, buying too many lures and trying to test too many lures at a time. Pick out a couple that you're really interested in and test them. Put one here, put another one there. Don't get carried away with carrying a whole damn bag of 25 or 30 different lures and, and trying to keep count of what you're using. Use two lures, regardless of what you're trapping. One, one goes in this pocket, one goes in the other pocket. Work with one ounce bottle. They're easy to work with. When you open up a bottle, you take the cap, you'll hold it in your hand, you get your lure out, put the cap back on, you don't have to lay it down on the ground because you can't handle it jar or come with a 16 ounce jar or something and mess yourself all up. One lure goes here, one goes there. If you put them in two sets, the set on your right gets this one, the set on the left gets this one. You keep it straight in your head. You don't have to carry a notebook around to see what you're catching with. And don't go with a half a dozen different lures. Work with two at a time. Then you know what, what you're catching and what you're not. What you're catching really. Madness Predator Lure. 
This is our time-tested North American Trapper Canine Curiosity Blend that is a mixture of pure skunk quill, coyote glands, beaver juice, asafoetida, civet oil, and other essential ingredients making it a must-have for your canine and predator sets. This is a multi-layered lure that does have the skunk carry to it, but will not overpower the animal at the set. This lure works great for coyote, fox, bobcat, and more when you head to the field. Proven products equals proven conservation. See all of our great wildlife control solutions at NorthAmericanTrapper.com today. That we made yesterday, if you'll remember it. Just the salmon oil squirted around the tree there and sat on, the, on this toilet. And uh, I just stepped on another trap here and I had four foot away from them and sprung that one. That's okay. These are really top notch locations here. This is a gigantic toilet here and you really can't appreciate it because we've got an awful windstorm here going the last. Day, so and it's put all these pine needles down so it's covered up the actual toilet from what it was yesterday but these are really fantastic sets and uh, these are sets you don't want to bypass these are the way you trap toilets and you know, we went by that pet, or told you about that while we were making the set and nice little otter they don't get much bigger than that here it isn't like the big otter you get down south or out in california someplace like that it's going to be all over this kill pattern. Not really have to worry much about reluring it. Really blur this up a lot. No way we can hide that, but we kind of dug this all out here where we had it before. Try to bed them just like you would. You're making a coyote or a fox set. No, I didn't give them them whatsoever. I probably should have some buckwheat calls here to work with now. Looks like he moved all over. Oh, look at what we got. Don't have to be as cleverly concealed as a Rock center, it seems to have to be, but I don't think it works too obvious. You may think you're not going to get another otter here, but all this mess really don't matter that much. Good enough for that. Let's reset this one. We should step them in for the next go. Notice I'm using my bare hands. Probably shouldn't do that, but I don't worry too much on it. About it. You feel better about yourself and you do use bare hands, but yeah, I'll sprinkle a little mink here around the area. Kind of work for the suspicion remover. They bed that trap in just like you would a coyote or a fox set. You don't want to give it. That's the most important part. I worry about that more than I do human odor. I'm going to still do it here. We got to worry this set here. I hope you'll remember when we were quickly consumed right down there. That's it. We're out of here. Let's go get another one. Well, that's the end of the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as you can see, uh, Johnny definitely was a proficient otter trapper. Uh, and, you know, 50 years of 
treasure hunter, trapper, and, you know, the book that he wrote uh, is just a, a small segment of the knowledge that that man had and the knowledge that uh, we were able to capture in the videos uh, and DVDs that we did. If you're looking for any of his DVDs or whatever, you can go to Schmidt Enterprises. They have them all, and they'll be more than happy to help you out. But any one of them is just jam-packed full of uh, history and knowledge and, and just... Uh, I'm very humbled that, that I was given the opportunity by him to actually follow him uh, many a times putting those together, and hopefully you do enjoy them. If you need any products, you can go to NorthAmericanTrapper.com. We have pretty much everything that will help you get started uh, for success while you're out in the field on your trapping processes as well. Proven products equals proven conservation, and we'll see you next time.